If you are a Meta shareholder or thinking about buying Meta stock, this video is for you. I have something really important to tell you. We have some big news and a big indicator in my opinion. As you know, if you've been watching this channel, I own shares of Meta. This is my position. It's a $9,500 position and I'm looking at the daily price, right? It's up 0.02%. You might be thinking, that means nothing. That's basically flat. Well, let's back up and look at the rest of my portfolio today, down $6,800 or down 8%. I'll talk about that later. I'm going to do another update video on my whole portfolio and what's going on. And if you want to get uh, SMS text updates and email updates anytime I make a trade, I'll put my Savvy Trader link down in the description below where you can click that link and follow my portfolio. Not that you should buy everything I buy, but you'll get SMS text updates every time I make a transaction. If that's interesting to you, the link is down in the description. Um, but this video is about Meta. When a stock is showing this much strength compared to the market, the whole market is down today and the rest of my portfolio is down, there's something that's being indicated there. I'm a long-term investor, but still this is a short-term indication that perhaps all of this negative news is built into Meta. And what we're seeing is a difference in all of this negative news and negative sentiment that we saw around Meta for so long. I mean, the, the stock is down huge. If you look, it's down 57% in a year. I'm gonna talk about the PE ratio in just a minute and, and why I think it's cheap. But if we look over the last month, the stock's actually up 3%. Over the last five days, it's up 0.67%. And today, like you see, it's, it's right around flat when the whole market is down. But I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Let's look at the news here and just look at the tone of the news changing, right? So uh, here we go. Social media names rise alongside Snap's restructuring. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. It's not Snap's restructuring. It's what came out about Snap's sales doing better than expected in the recent months. That's why we're getting a bounce in Meta and other social media names. Firm boosts meta estimates seeing improvement for August. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, hot stocks, media stocks rise. Meta team exploring new paid features for Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Okay, I don't pay attention to every single news article, but there's a change in sentiment in these news articles. And because people are humans, because investors trade like herds, they tend to follow each other when things get really negative or things get really positive. We are so negative on Meta that if there's any type of positive sentiment change and oh, by the way, the business starts performing, we have some major upside in the stock, right? And so that's why all of this is important. And here's what came out on Snap after they made that announcement, right? UBS, which is an investment bank, defends Snap in light of layoffs, says slowing growth, this is revenue growth, likely bottomed in July. So they defended Snap on Thursday as the investment firm us today said slowing growth likely bottomed in July and improved in August with the potential to accelerate due to easier comparisons in tech improvements. So they estimated that 12% growth in August came from easier comparisons, but also modest improvements in spending. So that's advertising spending industry-wide, which guess who else that's gonna benefit? Meta. And in my opinion, Meta is a much better place for advertisers to spend money than Snap, but that's a whole nother subject. Okay, and then we had um, a firm boost Meta estimates seeing improvement for August holidays, right? Cleveland Research is boosting estimates for Meta platforms after it sees the third quarter is tracking better than feared and that the holiday outlook are looking up. Soft July has been followed by an August that looks to improved, notably driven by improved direct response performance, ad use cases in retail and e-commerce, some directional improvement and branding. Okay, and here we go. We're heading into the holidays, right? Fourth quarter and holiday forecasts are rising as the recent softness is seen as more of a delay in ad spend and some budget flush is set to arrive as retail and e-commerce advertisers start looking to clear inventory with more promotional activity. Meta and Google are expected to be the biggest beneficiaries there. I agree. Okay, in the last article we'll look at before we jump into my analysis of the PE ratio and if I think it's overvalued, undervalued or what, Meta team is exploring new paid features for Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. WhatsApp is such an untapped place where they can get so much revenue if they figure it out. So it's entirely untapped right now. Uh, anyways, Meta platform is establishing a new group focused on creating more paid features for its family of apps. Okay, we know Meta has been so focused on the metaverse and VR and AR, they're still focused on that. But look at this, they are starting to also 
reprioritize and optimize more paid feature in its family of apps. There's a huge opportunity here as Snapchat faces troubles. Maybe TikTok is gonna face troubles, who knows? Meta could be dominant here. Okay, so one question was, you know, is this gonna be something where people can turn off advertising by paying for a special feature? No, that's not what Meta is planning to do. They don't have plans to let users pay to turn off advertising and it is still committed to its ads business, says VP of monetization. Any new product will be complementary to our existing ads business. Meta's new group will look for ways to bring new premium features to Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. The company has tiptoed into paid features so far. It's recently rolled out payments for virtual giftable stars on its Reels video feature. So there's more coming for that. Okay, now let's talk about valuation, right? This is a little bit complicated looking, but once I explain, I think it'd be pretty easy to understand. Okay, we have this line right here that represents the current stock price. This orange line is the PE ratio equal to the earnings growth rate. So the earnings growth rate since 2011 has been 28% per year. This represents a PE ratio of 28. Right now, the PE ratio is about 14 and a half, okay? The, almost the lowest it's ever traded at as a public company. Probably is the lowest it's ever traded at as a public company. Okay, we don't expect Facebook to keep growing earnings as fast as it did back in 2013, 14, and 15 when it was a much smaller company, but I do think they're gonna turn their earnings growth back around and reaccelerate it, and the analysts agree, right? We Everyone knows they're expecting negative growth in earnings this year, minus 28%. Everyone knows that. But it's forecast to pick it back up to 12 and 17% in 2023 and 24, okay? So let's give ourselves a timeline back to 2017 when Facebook was larger than you know back in the day and earnings growth was actually slower. So now we can see that earnings growth since 2017 has been 11% per year. I think that's a fair range to think that earnings growth is gonna be over the next several years, okay? And so the normalized price to earnings ratio has been 26 over the since 2017. It's down at 14.5, which is significantly lower than its average over time. But I don't even think the PE needs to get back up to 26. Maybe it never gets back up there. And that's okay if they can grow earnings. Even just to a PE of 15 through 2024, with these pretty poor earnings growth expectations built in, you still get an 8% annualized rate of return for a 20% total return. Now that's with very conservative earnings estimates in my opinion. And so is this the most amazing return ever? No, but do we have relative margin of safety because the PE is currently so low and expectations are so low for Meta stock? I think so. And so when I look at this and I know that the market usually returns eight to 10% per year and the sentiment is so negative around Meta I think they could actually outperform and maybe do better than this in 2023 and better than this in 2024, and that would push the potential stock price higher. And so like I shared, I, I have a position in Meta. I'm not changing it. If anything, I'll be buying more shares. And if you wanna see exactly what I do, remember to go to SavvyTrader.com, the first link down in the description, and just hit the subscribe, follow my portfolio, and you'll get those SMS portfolio updates when I make any changes. All right, we'll see you later today where I'm gonna to do a portfolio update and tell you how much money my portfolio lost in the last couple of days. See you then.